Hey guys, back out here today to bring you a lesson that we're gonna learn in real time. I'm, I'm, I'm out here with Bradley Holman, right before the sun's even up. There was a massive mayfly hatch yesterday and we have a spot that we wanna go see if we can catch some bass on. Y'all stay tuned. It's gonna get probably a little crazy and hectic right after this. One thing you're gonna notice is right now we're dealing with that. Some people might not understand, but a full moon in the summertime can sometimes make that fishing really tough. And what I mean by that is, uh, these fish, when there is a full moon, they have a tendency to feed at night. And when they feed at night, it's really hard to catch those really big fish throughout the day. Now granted, are you gonna have a great early morning bite? Typically, yes. That's why we are out here first thing in the morning and we're gonna show you how to catch them right now. Like I said earlier, there's a mayfly hatch and that mayfly hatch was millions of them. I've never in my life seen a mayfly hatch to that degree. It was so many mayflies. And actually there's one flying right in front of my face right now. Uh, we're gonna show you some mayflies here in just a little while. Uh, see, there's a mayfly. They actually hatch out of the water. You know, Hallman did some research yesterday because we found all these little exoskeletons laying on the surface. And what they do is they they'll lay their eggs in the mud or and or on uh, the grass in the lake. And they'll hatch around this time of year, typically around a full moon. It just hit this week, and I'm telling you right now, I think it really changed the fishing. So let's see what happens. Let's see what we're gonna tie on. I think Hallman's gonna tie on a spinnerbait. I'm gonna throw a thunder cricket, uh, maybe a crankbait, and we're gonna see if we can catch some of these fish. There we go. All right. Thunder cricket. Played this morning. White That's thunder fun. cricket. And if you notice, it has a white blade on it. Uh, I don't know if it really matters. I just like that white blade, white thunder cricket, especially early in the morning. I mean, the sun's not even up yet. We've been here five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, not even five minutes. Uh, the thing is, is you've got to capitalize on that early morning bite. And I can't stress it to you enough. I don't care if you're fishing in a foot of water, throwing a top water, or out here throwing a thunder cricket, you got to fish where they're at, and you gotta be fishing hardcore first thing morning. That means we gotta get back to it right now. Oh my God, yeah. Where was this fish at? Bill is, I picked up that thunder cricket today and I started fishing it, trying to catch a big fish. And that's exactly what I've done here. This is a Sam Rayburn giant. Knew this fish was gonna come. It just didn't come when I really wanted it to come. Where was that fish yesterday? Yeah, this is, this is one of those real big ones. Right there. Check that out. <laughs> that is a massive, massive bass right there. Look at that. That's what you come to Sam Rayburn for. You know, I had that bite numerous times, throwing that Strike King Thunder Cricket. And I think one of the most important things here is the white blade. This isn't your typical blade. Check out that giant bass. Like, oh my gosh. Man, that was awesome, dude. That was awesome. Check that out, Holman. Bye-bye, baby. This is Panoptics Live Scope. Now, I want to show you something. I'm, okay, Holman's running the camera. This is grass out here in front. It's about 45 feet, okay? And I'm going to turn my troll motor, and I want you to just look at something, okay? You see these little white dots above the grass? That's actually fish sitting up there feeding. Those are all fish. There's a color separation there. I can now physically target these fish with my live scope oh, in a way that I could never do before, ever. I mean, there's absolutely no way I could have done this before. Holman's got him a nice one. Hook 
hooks are a little jammed. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah. I set my rod down to grab the camera and it was taking off. I thought I had a fish. Crazy when that happens like that. Whew. Yesterday we had a tournament. We caught 17 pounds. And, you know, last night when we got home, Almond was like, man, I just don't think we really hit the full potential of that spot. Let's change up, let's do a couple different things today and see what happens. Well, I can tell you right now that our little... Right there, another nice bass right there. Nice one, Holman. I feel like we kind of missed the ball on that one there, Holman. That's all we got up this morning. That is. 5 a.m. I came back out here to do this again because we did feel like we'd left something on the table. And, uh, and it was about coming up here and doing some audibles and changing up some different presentations after we kind of worked on school of fish. Something Andrew and I are very aware to do. Somehow we got closed minded like we all do in fishing and you got to stay open minded. I mean, that's really the deal. Got another nice one. I'm not really sure how big it is. It feels like a pretty good one though. Oh yeah. Check that one out, guys. Jeez. Bingo! Fat, fat that fish is. Choke that thunder cricket. You know, something I noticed on this particular fish, I'm gonna get this fish back in the water. Nice one, three something, three and a half pounder. One thing I noticed about that fish, I saw it on live scope and I'm not just trying to say live scope even that seven pounder I caught saw it on live scope and that is something that is a huge deal when you're out here fishing in the grass and I can't stress it enough you can use live scope and you scan around see those fish sitting in the grass I literally saw that fish sitting in the grass pulled up made my cast over there hit it the first time reeled in made the cast again and it ate it on the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Let me tell you a little bit about my setup real quick. I'm using a 7.5 to 1 custom light. I think a, a fast gear ratio reel is crucial whenever you're throwing a Thunder Cricket. Uh, I used to th throw a 6.8 to 1, I just really don't anymore. I throw that 7.5 to 1, you catch up with them better. 17 pound Strike King Tour Grade fluorocarbon, which is just the line I always throw on it. But the rod, so typically I always talk about the Magnum Hammer. This is not the Magnum Hammer. This is actually the ledge swim bait rod. It's a seven six medium heavy, but it has a real bendy tip to it. To me, especially on a lake like Sam Rayburn, Gunnersville, one of these really big fish factories, I like to go with a little bit bigger rod for the fact that when you get that big bite, you have enough leverage to set the hook and catch that fish. It's not always the best rod for skipping and throwing around targets, but when you're out here in the open water fishing hydrilla, and that's exactly what we're doing today, that's exactly what you want to throw is that a little bit bigger stiffer rod that 3 8 ounce uh, strike king thunder cricket the white one actually this this has the white blade i changed the skirt out and put a little bit more of a transparent shag color on it uh, with a white swim bait trailer and hey guys this is two days after the tournament or a day after the tournament of a two-day tournament and we're still out here smoking them on this thing that should tell you right there how good this bait is you know if we'd have come out here an hour later this bite would be done we would have missed it wouldn't have caught them it's just something about them feeding up at night feeding on those mayflies shad you know and they're not just eating the mayflies and i think that's a very important point i need to make is these fish are actually eating the bluegill and the shad that are associated with the mayflies. Because bluegill, the whole day yesterday, we saw those fish come up and those bluegill come suck those mayflies down. Well, when that's the case, that's when those bass pull in there, pull into those areas, and they start eating those bluegill, eating those shad. And it's evident today that one of the most important things to do is when you find them, you need to really bend on them that first 30 to 40 minutes. and and I think that was an important aspect of today. Holman's been the guy that switched up. I kept the Thunder Cricket in my hand, especially after I caught the seven pounder. He's been throwing a square bill. He threw a spinner bait, caught one, broke off a real big one on spinner bait. You gotta keep an open mind out here, guys. I can't stress it enough. Keep that open mind, and you're gonna catch fish.